and welcome again to this series of, of, of compilers and programming languages. And we have looked at different uh, ways of par doing parsing, looked at men here the last, last time. And now we're extending the last video and doing some more parsing, but also generating ASTs, so abstract syntax trees. And this is really what you want to do in a compiler because you want to generate the AST and then you do semantic analysis and then in the end optimizations and, and, and code generations. So let's uh, continue. And if you haven't watched other videos, please look at them first uh, because I'm building on these examples. So this is the example from the previous video where we were basically creating a small uh, calculator. And that now we want to create an abstract syntax tree. So we want to create a data type for that abstract syntax tree. And to be able to create the data type, we need to create a new mm -hmm. file. So the recommendation is to have a new file called called something like ast.ml, where we create the new data type. First, we want to have this type, and let's call the type of the main program here, an uh, expression. So this is expression language. We will have one expression. Uh, what would, do we want to be able to support in this language? Well, we have integers, right? So we want to have an expression for integers. Let's call it eint, this constructor. Then we want to have these binary operators like plus, minus, and so on. And we instead, we could, write one, you know, one constructor for each, but sometimes it's better to factor it out in a separate data type. So let's call that bin op here of, of a bin op. So we'll define this in a second, but let's first say that we have this recursively like this. So it refers to itself. And then we can create this bin op, bin op, bin op add, bin op sub, bin op mal, and uh, bin op div. So that, that when we have the binary operators, and since we have the junior minus, we should have a junior operator as well. So let's call that a unop. And we, we just have one unop now, but maybe we will have some more in the future. So unop, and then just since it's a unop operator, we just have one expression type uop, unop minus. All right. But we'll also want to have some more interesting constructs here. We will want to have a let expression so we can like let something in similar to this, like let x equal to five in. We want to be able to write that in our syntax. Let's write the abstract syntax for the let. Let's call it just an e let. Then we have a string, which would be the thing that we are binding to. And then we have the expression is the first what we are binding and then the rest. If we write this again, let x equals to six in x plus two, like this, then this string here corresponds to x, this expression here corresponds to 6, and this expression here corresponds to this expression, right, in the concrete syntax. That's the let, and then we also want to have variables. Let's call that uh, e var of string. That's it. So now we have our abstract syntax. Let's do something with it. Let's uh, go to our parser first. We had all these uh, constructs here for, for parsing. But we, we do not have like let and so forth. So we want to add a few more tokens, right? So one token that we want to have is equal. So it would correspond to the equal sign. We add add sub mal and div, uh, but we also want to have the let. So we create a token for let. And we want to have a token for in as well. And we also want to have this token for the variable. And it's pretty common that we call that for an identifier say that we have an identifier carrying this string. So now we have all the new uh, new tokens. We need to, of course, extend the lexer as well. This is the lexer that we got from the previous time. We want to create an identifier. So we want to write something like this as string. And then we want to use that string to do something. Can we write this ident? Yes, we can write. We can define this, this uh, regular expression up here. Let's start by defining some different things and then give different names to it and then combine them together. So one thing that is good to have is just letter that we have, for example, we support capital letters. So A to C, or it's in lowercase. And then we have, this is the letter. We have the digit that, and we have already written that over here, right? Rename it like this and then give it the name there define something that we call non-digit, something that is uh, not a digit, but it's a part of an identifier because we want to have, be able to have underscore 
in our identifiers. So it's either a, an underscore or a letter. And now we can define the identifier. The identifier is then starting with a non digit followed by a digit or a non digit and have that zero or more times. So that's a, an identifier. In this way, we are lexing and matching here an identifier. Note that the keywords like let and in, they are also having the same syntax as identifier. And it's not good to have too many tokens. We could have matched like let here, but it, it's in the end, there, there's a limitation on many states the lexer can have internally. So it's better to just take the identifier here and then do match on, on the string. So if we match on this string, we can directly construct the keywords. If it's matching on a let, we just construct a let. If it's matching on the in, we just create in. So these are the tokens that we defined here, right? The let and the in here. When we are done, we don't have any more keywords. We just say that we get the string and then we construct the identifier and attach the actual string. And here we have the nice lexer with these uh, keywords. We have plus here. We also need to support the equality like this. Well, so we are extending it like this. We have changed with this to this digit here, and we keep this syntax for handling and raising exceptions for. And uh, let's uh, go back to the parser then. We have added all the new tokens for the precedence. We don't have anything new to do. Here we have to change because now we are not returning an integer. We want to return a AST node. And what was the type of the AST node? Well, let's take a look at that. That was expression. So we should change from integer to expression here. So now we're returning an expression instead. Here we just have the main. We can take a look at here. We want to return this expression here, an integer. We need to return the the AST node instead. And uh, what, what did we call that? Well, e int. So we write e, e int and return that instead. Plus, we don't want to add together now. We want to return the AST node, and that is called e bin op. If we go back here, e bin op. And then we need to say which binary operator. Well, it is the bop add. So bop add. And then we just say e1 and comma e2. So we are taking e1 and e2 and creating a constructor here for addition. Actually quicker to just copy this one and update it. We got all these operators for the unior, unior minus. We need to construct that as well. E un op. And then we have the minus. And then we just have e here. And finally, here for the uh, for the parentheses, uh, nothing has to be changed because we're just returning the uh, AST node here. Well, we, we need to also to update the the main file, of course. And it's it should look basically the same, but we need to also include the AST here because we're going to use it now. We are going to print it because the result is not an integer now, but the AST. For now, we're going to print the actual AST here. So we want to do like this, but the AST should be printed as a string. And then we need to pretty print the AST. And how do we do that? Well, we need to have a pretty printer. So we need to have a function called pretty print expression, but we don't have that function. So let's, let's write that function. Let's do that in the AST file. All right, so we have the AST file. Now we want to create a pretty printer for this. It's a recursive function, so we call it pretty print expression. It's going to match on all the different things that we have here, all the expressions. E int, what should we write? Just, just print it. And now we're going to have a notation that looks a little bit like prefix form, similar to our constructors, just to make it clear. And this is typically good to have when you want to debug and test your code as well. Let's uh, go on with the e bin op. And here we have the bin op then there, and e1, e2. And um, what can we do now? Well, we want to print, say that it's a bin op, and um, we want to combine it. But now we want to print the actual binary op. So we want to write something like this. If we print 
spin up. So we need to have this function. Let's write define that function directly, just so we have it. So we can actually copy this line here, which goes a little bit faster. So we write let pprint uh, bin up with function like this. And then if it's a add, do like this. If it's a sub, it's like this. Okay, we're done with that. We are printing the bin bin up. And then we do nice syntax. And then we want to print to print the expression itself. Just do it recursively. E1, then like this, like this, and then we combine it together again. All right. We need to do the same thing with UNOP. We have to define UNOP as well. All right. Uh, so we can just write then e up like this bin tune up you up we need to have uh, the expression itself and then ending like this let's uh, define the the let directly as well so let is just writing out this syntax so it's it's basically the same we can just do it quickly variable name e1 e2 and here we write let And so it can be good just for clarity here, but that we have, after the let here that we have a new line here, it look, will look a little bit better. Finally, we just have the variable and we write that as evar something like that. So then we recur recursively create our pretty printed text and that we can pretty print. One thing that we forgot to do is to add the actual AST. And uh, you can include arbitrary or camel code in the parser as well using this special syntax. So here we say we open AST. So we include the AST because otherwise these constructors are not available. Another thing is that we need to open up the printing. Let's try it now. It compiled, but we got some warnings here. So the equal ident and so are not are not used. But let's try it anyway with our test program. So we can, and as we can see, we got this pretty printing of the AST. We actually managed to the, do the pretty printing. And we can see here that it's a, the abstract syntax also encodes the precedent that was encoded here. You see how the multiplication comes within the addition. If we would write like this, the AST would not contain the parentheses themselves, but you see that the order change so that the plus will be done first. All right, but we cannot write something like this right now. Let X equals to four plus three in, and then use, for example, A here. If we do this and run that, we get a parse error because it doesn't know what this is this let. We have it in the lexer, right? We have the let in the lexer, but we have not included into the parser yet. And it could be tempting here to just insert the let here, but as it turns out, I mean, we, we need to have that these expressions have higher precedence than the let. And the one simple way to do that is to just create a a new non-terminal that points to this expression so that expressions got higher precedence by construction in the grammar. So we can construct then a let expression non-terminal like this. And here we say that we have a, a let and then we have the identifier and that is an, an identifier. We say that we want to have an equal sign and then we have the first expression E1 equals to let expression. So now we, we refer to ourselves here in E2, again, a let expression. And what, what, what is the AST node? Well, it's an E let. We can look at the abstract syntax tree again here. It's this one, E let, the string expression and expression. So we just write E let ID E1, e2 and that's it but we also want to have just a expression so that if it's it's either a let or it's an expression and now 
these expressions got higher precedence. But we also should not forget to say, say here that within the parentheses, we allow let expressions again. So we not need to change that to a let exp here. And now we should be done. We compile. Let's look at the test program again and run that. We still got a parser. Let's see if we can see what, where the error is. It's in the let. Well, the last thing that we forgot here was actually that the main points now to expression. So we, we are not really using let the expert directly. So we need to change that as well. And then compile and run. We got an error here because a here is not a yet added, right? We forgot also to add the variable. So we need to have an identifier as well. Let's call x equals to identifier. And then we just construct evar. If we look at the ast here, you see that this is the evar. And now we compile again. And as we can see here, we got the let, let's look at the main. We got the let x plus four plus three. And then we have the rest of the content underneath here. And it's the binary operator with the multiplication that's highest precedence. We first add together, and then we have a unary operator and the variable a. And note how it did not complain here on an A. I mean, it should be like this, right? Because X is binding here. But this is really not part of parsing. It's the semantic analysis that should have done a name analysis checking that these ones are correct. And this is something that I will probably do in a later video. So now we have seen how to construct AST nodes from a parser and how to pretty print them. Thank you. If you like this video, please subscribe and add a comment and tell me more about what you want to learn about compilers and programming languages.